So, story time. We almost got scammed today. So, inside of our accounting firm, and this this is a story. Uh, I'm gonna be kind of maybe jumping all over the place. It really just happened. Uh, but, you know, hopefully you learn some stuff. So, we almost got scammed. The way I say almost is that we have really strong processes and procedures that stop people from being able to take advantage of us while we're pricing and recording out our stuff. So, um, got a got a notification from my um, advertising yesterday that we got a new potential client lead. Called them up. Hey, this is Bryce. Saw you fill out um, an ad on our website. Um, tell me a little bit more about what you have going on. So basically, talk, talk, talk. It's an IT consultant who basically has an S corp. <coughs> was basically looking to file uh, twenty twenty three taxes as well as needs a cleanup for four months out of the year. Um, also needs his personal tax done. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we're talking, 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 talking. Okay, he only had about 10 minutes because he was going to a meeting. I was like, cool. So we scheduled another call for like 12 o'clock. I, I basically did a meeting with my partner. Uh, we basically just, just talked on the phone with the person. Probably for about 10, 15 minutes. We were just talking about, okay, so hey, this is the pricing of this thing, right? So I'm gonna need for you to basically give me access. So he basically asked him, okay, cool, how many transactions do you think that you have? Um, I'm look, he's like, oh, let me pull up my QuickBooks. 30 transactions. Okay, cool. So we, we basically gave him the, the price quote based on that, like a price range. But we said, okay, cool. So we need for you to send us access to your books just to verify that the monthly amount is reasonable based on your, your true transactional value. Okay, cool, man. We'll send it to you. Also, we're going to send you a proposal that's basically going to have all the stuff we talked about in writing. We're also going to need for the cleanup a 50% deposit. Okay, so the guy's like, okay, cool, cool. <coughs> he gets to the phone like, yeah, man, you know, I'd love to talk again. Um, I was like, okay, cool. He's like, like, later on today. What? Why didn't he talk to you later on today? Are you, you gonna go through this stuff that fast and we can do our onboarding call? Because he basically w w was needing to uh, do his uh, taxes because he was working with a CPA firm. But he said the CPA firm dropped the ball on filing the extension. Really what happened was they filed the extension but it was a little bit late so it got rejected. And then rather than him following up with it, he saw how much he would have to pay. He didn't want to pay that much and, and fees and fines. So he wanted to go someplace else. Understandable. Very right, cool. So five o'clock comes, he basically, he basically goes up, hey, so I know you guys are like, you know, saying for the deposit, like you want 50% deposit. Uh, what's the lowest deposit you go? Lowest deposit, what do you, what do you mean? Why would we go lower? And we're talking, talking, talking. I was like, so wait, wait. So let's say we lower the deposit. Do you have the money to pay the remainder? Like, if you asked us to do it fast, like, what if we have to do it tomorrow? Can't come up with the money. Is it just that? He's like, oh, no, no, I have the money. It's just, you know, on short notice of blah, 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 blah. Cool, man. We can do 30%, okay? But, okay, so make sure you so, say, yeah, could you rewrite that in the proposal? Cool, man. And then he said, um, yeah, let's schedule a meeting for tomorrow. No, no, no. So before you do our meeting tomorrow, I need for you to have the proposal signed and at least a deposit paid for. Can you do that? Yes. Schedule a meeting. This morning for the meeting. Oh, yes. And, and, even, and at that meeting that was the 5 p.m. meeting, the dude was 42 minutes late. Guess why? Because he's working a full-time job in addition to having his, like, IT business. So he was, like, 42 minutes late to that call. Like, we ended up just, like, walking away and just doing something. He just randomly called me. Well, oh, hey man, what's up? Because <laughs> we, we thought he had ghosted at that point. And like, I don't know, it was just very interesting. But yeah, he calls 42 minutes late. Today, this morning, uh, we scheduled the, the onboarding call at 7 a.m. in the morning. I, if you know anything about me, I hate morning meetings. Hate morning meetings. Hate morning meetings, right? So I, I, I woke up at 6.50 and I was tired, right? now. Here's a weird thing. I usually will wake up at like 6.35, 6.42, 7 o'clock. When my body naturally wakes up at that time, I'm, a, I'm regular. When I'm artificially woken up by an alarm or a clock, that's when things are like, oh, that's, that's rough. So I, I, was, I was tired. The guy ended up not even showing up. He's like, oh, I'm stuck in traffic, so I'm not going to be on my computer. So when I get in the office, I'll text you. And when soon as he gets off, he's like, oh, we have to reschedule, man. I have a meeting now. Oh my gosh. So we, we, we meet with him at 12. At 12, that's when he goes, hey man, 
and I was looking at a proposal, and like I was looking back at my QuickBooks, and then like I think I I, I made a mistake. Okay, what's your mistake, man? Yeah, so I said it was thirty transactions. It's actually three hundred transactions. Yeah, we know. You know. Yeah, that's why we ask you to verify the transactions. Oh. So the, the actual cleanup is more of like six thousand dollars instead of the amount of money that we charge. So like the uh, we, we charge for the taxes, both the federal and the personal. I'm sorry, the federal and the state business taxes, as well as the federal and the state personal taxes, as well as the cleanup. Right. So <coughs> at first, at thirty transactions, that's not a lot of transactional volume. So it's a not a huge cleanup, but it's doable. Right. But then when he 10x is the number of transactions, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna amplify the price, buddy. He's like, oh, I can't afford that. So long story short, we basically he basically says, well, maybe I can do the bookkeeping of my own, so I used to do the bookkeeping, and I can't do the taxes, so you guys can do the taxes. Whatever, bro. <laughs> I was like, it's because th basically he has 30 hours worth of books he has to clean up in order to even do the tax return. It's like, bro, if you had the time to do it, you would already done it. He's like, well, you know, it's Fourth of July is coming up, so like maybe I can just take a, you know, a day off work or just, or just no, it's not a day off work. He said, maybe I can just do it at night. Oh, you have thirty hours worth of ability late at night on a random, random Tuesday to do this stuff. Okay. And then there was a the whole, um, because he couldn't afford it. He said with his business, like use your personal. It was, it was just a mess. So we got the phone. And Sharon's like, you know what he probably want to do? Cause like, cause here's the thing, he looked at the proposal. But he never signed the proposal, even, even though we were supposed to like have the meeting and whatever. And that's when he came clean and said, hey, you know, it's, it's not going to mess up. So what he really wanted, like, here's what the scam is. The scam is that you under, basically, under, quote, under represent what you have transactions-wise. And then when the person gets in there, you say, oh, well, we already signed the contract, so do the rest of the work. Or you say, well, hey, I'm sorry, man, I didn't know it was this many transactions when I looked at it. Can we still do the same price? So you can either go hardball or they can go, like, lowball. It just kind of depends on the person. However, if you have a good process in place, which is looking at the books before you <coughs> make a proposal, and if you have <coughs> a proposal in place that specifies what happens if there are misrepresentations of the work, as well as how to get remedies and like it's just more buttoned up, then these scammers generally tend to run. Like he basically just like, hey, I, I don't think I can scam these guys, so let me come clean. It's basically what he was basically just saying. My, my thought process when he was like, I thought he was a little bit shady. And I was like, I don't know if he's going to like finish paying the rest of the deposit or the rest of the, 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 the cleanup fees and like the tax fees, right? So it's like, um, I don't know exactly why I felt that, but it's just like, I just kind of feel it. That's why he's asking like, what's the lowest deposit I can make? So his probably his, one of his goals was if, if when he came in and told us the truth about the transactions, if we did not go along with the plan, he would take the rest of the money and run essentially. So he'd wait till the bookkeeping's done, basically say, I'm not gonna pay you that, take the work that was done, run off to someone else. And he'd only, he would have only paid a little bit of money to actually go and get the full books cleaned up. <coughs> but process saves you. Process makes sure everything works. So we're gonna schedule a follow call with them, maybe um, I think it's like tomorrow at 12, just kind of see what his plan is. Cause I, we know he's gonna do the, the taxes, it's just, Bookkeeping, I think the bookkeeping was what, like, it was either five or like seven K or something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, yeah, so it could be interesting. Basically, what, gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take his, like, all of his money, I'm just going to go throw it right back into an ad campaign, and then go get like three or four people. So, every like, let's let's say this, the taxes for him would be like, I don't know, $3,000, right? You basically take that money and you go put it back in the ads. So, for us, we know that with our ads, it takes about every. every about three fifty to like four hundred dollars we spend on ads, we get one payment back, right? Whether it's, whether it's a cleanup fee, whether it's a taxes, whether that's like first months of bookkeeping, that's just how much it costs to get a payment for us, right? So we're basically just gonna keep throwing that back in there, just throwing that back in there. I'm thinking with this new advertising that we're doing, I'm gonna try and throw in about, I'd like to say about eight thousand to ten thousand dollars. That should spit out anywhere between ninety six to an extra hundred thousand dollars. Um, per year worth of worth of finances. So we're gonna kind of see how that goes. 
The leads from, the, from this ad campaign are kind of trash, I'm being honest with you. And it's not, it's trash for a different reason than what I thought it would be. Um, yeah, just, just very, very interesting, you know? But you live and you learn, and you get better and better and better, you know? That's the name of the game, that's the moral of the story, okay? So if you want some help growing your business, if you want some help implementing processes so you can't get scammed, go ahead and click the link inside the description, either above or below the video, to book a call with myself.